It is really cool to see everyone here in person. It's been a while. My heart is kind of pounding, so uh, bear with me. Um, my name is Omri, and like Alan said, I'm here to talk a bit about how uh, Datadog's APM suite, a pretty wide array of products, can help make remediation faster, and what other parts of Datadog can help make your lives even easier. Before we talk about anything there, I want to introduce CouchCache. CouchCache is a fairly straightforward e-commerce website. Um, if you haven't guessed it already, it tries to sell, cou to sell couches uh, to users. It's a fairly straightforward funnel. Uh, people go, they look for a couch, they find one, they add it to their cart, they check out, hopefully everything's successful. We try to show a couple of ads on the way, you know, people who bought this couch also bought this ottoman type thing. Um, the backend architecture for this, try that again, Backend architecture for this should look fairly familiar to everyone here. It's very straightforward. Uh, up at the top, we see a web application. It's served by a single web service that then makes calls to a whole bunch of uh, individual microservices that are each completely owned by a different team, right? If you think back to Brooks' talk earlier about the uh, service catalog, you build it, you own it, which means that each one of these services is written in a different language, whatever the preference of that team is. It's running on a different type of uh, architecture, different orchestration. Some of these are on Kubernetes, some of these are on Lambda, some of these are on very C2s. Um, and each one of these has its own kind of performance benchmarks that the team has set for it. But we need to provide a single um, harmonious experience for our users. And the question is, how do we monitor this entire very diverse stack with standardized tooling. And to that effect, I want to take a quick step back and just remind everyone what is the Datadog APM suite for um, all of our services. So on the front end, uh, we released real user monitoring, right? The ability to keep track of our users' behaviors on our websites and uh, mobile applications, keep track of things like sessions, page views, user actions, uh, et cetera. On the back end, we have distributed tracing, which I think a whole bunch of people showed screenshots from through the day. Uh, the ability to keep track of individual requests as they propagate through the stack and extract out of that meaningful health metrics for services. Both on the front end and on the back end, we have synthetic monitoring, which take a more proactive approach to monitoring. They basically say we can synthesize requests to your APIs or mimic users on the browser and make sure that we don't deploy uh, any destructive code or any destructive feature um, as we kind of operate. But then on this basis, we rolled out a couple of additional uh, deeper investigation tools, starting with error tracking, which looks at similar errors over time and groups them into what we call issues. And instead of giving just a single example, what we now have our first time seen, where is this error coming from or where is it more prevalent? Um, giving us a lot more tools to prioritize where to spend our efforts. Then we have Session Replay, which gives us a, a pixel-perfect recapture of user behaviors on our websites. That means that we can save a whole lot of back and forth time between support teams um, and users. It also, incidentally, uh, reduces a lot of friction that people have with support teams because they no longer need to report on uh, reproduction steps. Right? They can just go give a complaint, we find their session, replay it, and figure out exactly what's going on. And then on the back end, we have continuous profiler and database monitoring. Those are geared at helping you figure out very, very granular root causes, right? What line of code is ca causing a performance degradation? Uh, do we have a shared database instance that's kind of crashing and everyone's uh, uh, pointing fingers at each other? So that, that's where we are right now. And if we want to build on top of that, we are starting to look at end-to-end -end tooling. So Brooke already covered the service catalog. I won't belabor that point. But I do want to make sure that I mention Watchdog, which is our AI ML engine. And I, want to, uh, I will talk uh, later about how that can actually be helpful. We try to make sure that it's not buzzy. It's actually useful. But I think that's enough with uh, kind of conceptual slides. Time to see this in action. Uh, this is error tracking, which I kind of uh, mentioned already. Uh, it's a very popular starting point because it tells us what impact every error or every group of error has uh, on our stack, and it makes it fairly straightforward to figure out what's going on. So we can see at the top and on the side, when was this error first seen? Uh, is it still ongoing or when was it last seen? Where is it happening with the tags on the side? Uh, we try to bring in uh, kind of deeper types of information here. Uh, this is an example stack trace. And in some cases, that example stack trace should just be enough. The error message is like, oh, wait, 
I know exactly what's going on. I know how to go and fix it. We have a link to the uh, Git repo or whatever code uh, repository you use, and you can jump in there and go remediate. In this case, and I don't know who can read it because the text kind of tiny, uh, but that's a um, cannot read property of undefined error. So basically telling us that the API on the back end isn't returning like a meaningful result. We don't know how to process that. We're not dealing with it very gracefully, uh, but this isn't enough for us. So what can we do? Well, we can jump into RUM, we can jump into session replay to see what our users are actually experiencing. Right? So this is what session replay looks like. I didn't put in the full video because I just prefer it when uh, you know, the video do doesn't run ahead of me. Um, but on the right hand side, we have the entire breakdown of events of the session. So we can jump straight to where the error is happening and see what the user ex is experiencing. In this case, they're actually not experiencing anything. They're trying to click the add item button and nothing happens. And that's the thing that we want to figure out exactly what's going on. So we can click on that, do that, we get taken into RUM. What we see now is all the information about this user's session and the associated traces. This means that we can hop from the perspective of a front end error and the user that's experiencing it into the back end. And I'm not going to walk through exactly how to read the full flame graph, but I will say that for every part of this request, we keep track of quite a lot of information we bring in the underlying infrastructure metrics, be it from uh, Lambda or Kubernetes or EC2 or whatever architecture, um, whatever choice of infrastructure you may have made. Uh, we bring in the associated log lines, we bring in the associated network performance, uh, and so on and so forth, and most recently we've added code hotspots, which brings in information from our continuous profiler. In this case, what we're looking at is a particular line of code that's preventing the API from returning an actual result. It's just sending like a null response. Um, so now we might be asking ourselves something slightly different. Has this code been there for a while and therefore we should just go in and fix it or is this something fairly recent, i.e. we should go back and revert a deployment? Very, very easily we can jump into the APM service page that has a lot of this relevant information and please pardon me for jumping around. I wanna zoom in on two of the graphs that we have on that page. Uh, th these fall under what we call deployment tracking. They help you figure out what's going on as people roll out code, and it doesn't really matter what your deployment tactic is. If you use uh, gradual rollouts like what we have here on the graph, blue, greens, canaries, uh, et cetera, um, and we can fairly easily see that there's a pretty big spike in error rate uh, correlated with this deployment, and if anyone doesn't see that, it's the big orange blob on the graph. All right, so what did we look at we found an error on the front end, we figured out exactly what, went ha what happened on the end that caused it, and we know what we need to do. We really should be rolling back this version and then figuring out offline exactly what happened there, what code should we be uh, rolling out, what prompted this deployment, et cetera. But now I actually have a slightly bigger question to ask, and that is, can we do this faster? Can Datadog just give you a coherent story of everything that happened here from the user's perspective all the way down to a bad code deployment. And this is where Watchdog comes in. Like I said, Watchdog is our AI ML engine and it's built on three main uh, legs. The first one are Watchdog alerts. They've been around for quite a while and they do automatic uh, anomaly detection. It lets you know things like, hey, um, this service's error rate uh, isn't behaving in the same cycle that it usually does or uh, for a particular machine, we forecast the disk usage, and we try to say, hey, this di we're actually about to run out of disk space on a particular machine, and you can opt into these alerts. Obviously, we try not to spam you, so they're always opt-in, but you don't need to do any setup for them. In that sense, they are proactive. Then we have Watchdog Insights. Watchdog Insights are contextual, and that means that anywhere where you are in the Datadog app, Watchdog will try and surface meaningful things to you, and we're gonna see that in action but essentially, if you're in the Logs Explorer or in the APM service page, we're gonna try and surface um, tags on the underlying data that is associated with higher error rates or higher latencies, kind of trying to save you the hassle of figuring out the needle in the haystack. And then finally, we have watchdog analyses, which I'm gonna uh, show you in more detail in a second, but these are the things that try to tell you a coherent story. They connect all the dots, they traverse the map and they try to give you a clear picture of what's going on and what you should know, and with that, what you should do about it. As I promised, I don't want to spend too much time in the conceptual slides, I want to sh show you what it looks like. So this is an example watchdog alerts called a, uh, specifically a faulty deployment. 
Uh, this has been out for quite a while, but basically if you use our version tags, what we do is every time we detect a new version, we try to figure out if that version is associated with a new error type, right? Something like an issue in uh, error tracking, or uh, with an increase in error rates. And that way you can opt into these alerts. Um, but that's not enough, because like I said, we also have the watchdog insights. And if we're looking at here, this is the logs explorer. Um, and we can see that right under uh, the Explorer itself, we now have these cards in pink that tell us, hey, one of these tags, and I don't know if you can read it, but that says that um, customer tier enterprise has a higher error rate or higher occurrence of error logs than other tags or than what we'd expect. So that might be interesting for us to dig into. And right next to it is a brand new feature that I'm happy to announce is uh, available. Uh, log anomaly detection. And the idea is that we look at the stream of ingested logs. We detect patterns in those. If you've ever used our log pattern uh, feature, we do that automatically. And then we look at changes in those patterns over time. So if you're spiking in warning logs or uh, error logs or critical logs, we'll show that to you here. And it will always scope to the query that you're typing in. So if you really look closely at the details, we're looking at logs for the service web store and we're seeing a uh, pattern for that particular service. So let's take all of this together and talk for a second about root cause analysis. Root cause analysis tells you that coherent story that I've been kind of building towards. And what we see here in the top left is essentially the root cause of uh, our entire story for the day. Someone deployed a bad piece of code on the web store service. What did that do? It actually caused an increase in both latency and error rates on the add item endpoint, right? Remember, that's how our kind of story started. But it didn't do only that. It actually affected four other services that had degraded performance, and it hit three views on the front end, impacting a total of 183 users. And we have all of that information at the top. And if you scroll down through this feature, you'll see a lot more uh, evidence that we collect along the way log patterns, traces, relevant infrastructure metrics are all kind of displayed uh, as supporting evidence. And we give you all of this in a single place where you say, okay, I now understand exactly what's happened. I understand who is impacted. 134 users is quite a lot for our tiny little couch shop. Um, and you know what to do about it because in this case, you really want to like revert the code deployment. Awesome. So with that, I really am thrilled to announce that all of these are available starting today. Uh, come check it out in the watchdog demo outside and come talk to us about anything that relates to how AI and ML can help you out in your uh, day jobs. Thank you.